If you're just getting into bouldering, you've probably found starting the actual boulder can be really challenging and it may be that you need some tips to make it a little bit easier. Some of these tips are for beginner climbers, but honestly, one of the tips, one of my favorite tips included in this video, took over a year for me to figure out. And now that I have figured it out, light bulb, it is so much easier to get started on every route that I do. Hi, I'm Sarah from SendEdition.com, the website that brings you tips, tricks, and occasional gear review for climbers and boulderers. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you like it, please like and subscribe to this, like this video and subscribe to this channel. And of course, if you appreciate any of these tips, please tell me below which one stood out to you the most. And if I missed any tips, please also include what tips you would recommend to other boulders. Let's go ahead and get started with the very first tip, which is reviewing the climb. So before you even get started on your bouldering problem, you need to review it and figure out what is the solution and what ways does your body need to move to get through this climb. So for example, in this climb, I've highlighted in yellow these holds and then I've gone through and I figured out which holds I'm going to use in what order. So I've got the start hold, both my hands will be on that start hold. My first move, second move, third move, and finish. It doesn't just end at your hands. And this is where a lot of climbers seem to miss it is they attempt the boulder without figuring out their feet. So here is the feet positioning that I figured out for this boulder. And actually I didn't get this right the first time I climbed it. I couldn't figure out that last sixth move so it, sometimes it does take you a little bit to figure out the beta and you do have to test it. But if you can avoid as much testing as possible, figuring out the beta before you get climbing is super beneficial with conserving energy. And especially as a beginner boulder, you're probably finding that your hand strength might be a little bit weaker than you'd hoped. And if that is the case, being able to identify each move beforehand will make it so you don't waste your time or your energy reaching for one hold or waste your time trying to hold on while you're figuring out the next move. Now that you've figured out how to actually do the boulder and you figured out the beta, the next tip is how to start the boulder. And this is what you came here for, right? This is actually my favorite tip on this list. And that is whether or not you should start the boulder high or low. A lot of times when you're a beginner climber, it's recommended that you just start with your head below. As you can see, if I started with my head above, it's actually a lot less effort for me to move forward in the climb. So how do you know if you need to keep your head high or keep it low? The best way to do this is to look at your first move. Is your first move something where you're going to be reaching really high or is your first move something where it's just a horizontal movement? In this climb that I've highlighted in pink, I've got the two starting holds on the right and then the first hold on the left. And it's similar in height, so it's more of a horizontal move than it is an actual vertical move. And because of this, I want to get my head below the hold so that I can keep straight arms. Straight arms will help minimize the energy that you're using while climbing. So by getting my head below, I'm able to keep my arms straight into the first move. In contrast, we've got this orange climb where it's a really big movement vertically up to the next hold. So what I did was I put my body above the hold. I did try this down below just because of how the hound hold was. And it's kind of similar to an edge, which is commonly suggested that you put your head below it. But as you can see, the movement and the momentum that I need, it takes a lot of energy to get up to that first move. In contrast, I could start higher and you can see in this versus video how obvious that part is. If you are higher already, you just have to reach your arm up. Whereas when I was down below, I had to practically jump up using my entire body in comparison to just moving my hand. Now tip number three is sometimes you have a good hold and sometimes you have a bad hold and sometimes the solution is to cross your arms. 
So for example, in this climb, I was actually plenty fine just moving over and keeping my hands straight as they were. But if you're a little bit weaker, in this case, if your left hand is a little bit weaker, you can cross your arms so that your left hand is on the more stable hold, the easier hold, and then you can make the move your first move. Tip number four is considering the actual handhold type. And in this case, for this yellow climb, we've got a yellow edge, which edges are difficult to hold onto unless your body is beneath the hold, then it's a lot easier to stay on the wall. If I put my body up above it, even which would match the idea that this is a vertical move, so you should keep your head above, it's actually more difficult to hold onto the wall and thus takes more energy. In contrast, we've got these two holds, which are the starting holds, and they are underclings. And undercling holds are ones where if you have your hands underneath them and you can use your body to leverage, they're a lot easier to use. So in this case, if I had gotten lower like this, it's really hard because it turns up pinching and so my hands are gripping a hold and it's really hard to use. In contrast, I can start up higher and because it's an undercling, I hold it into my body and it's much easier to maintain my body position while I move on to the next hold. Tip number five is to consider your momentum. Sometimes you just need extra momentum. For example, in this climb, the first move is really far away and actually requires a dyno. So you need a lot of momentum to get to the next hold, like jumping momentum. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to just stand up and touch it. With this purple one, I did a low start and swung over to the next hold. And if you followed my rule from tip number one, you would just stay higher. But it actually was harder for me to get my body over to that hold level with it because I didn't have momentum. If I got lower, it was much easier to get that momentum with using my legs. Tip number six is foot placement. And sometimes you're not gonna have really good footholds. So the solution to this is to smear. Smearing is when you push your foot against the wall and push and use the wall as your foothold instead of an actual hold. And as you can see on, on many of these climbs, I actually use a smear. Now there's a couple different reasons for this. Number one reason is your body positioning for the footholds available aren't that great. The other reason would be because there are no footholds for you to place them and so you can just use a smear. I hope that you enjoyed these tips and that they were helpful for you. If they were, please leave a comment below, like this video, and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this soon to come. Thanks again for watching. I'm Sarah from SendEdition.com and enjoy your send.